What's up, you lovely people? Welcome to episode 61 of Chubby Cat. Um, surprise, surprise, I'm actually joined by one of my brothers. Um, haven't been abandoned um, this episode. He, he's coming to save me, throwing me a life preserver, uh, getting us out of this rut. Yeah, do what I can. Hey, um, y'all, it's uh, Jason. It's Jason. Welcome back. Thank you. It's been From, been several weeks. It has been a while. It's been, <laughs> it's been a month. That's almost two. Yeah. Yeah, just that's pretty good. Tom out there left to dry. Hey, slowly watching our viewership just go away as they're like, mm, "This guy's not entertaining." You literally had one one cast member who was working twelve hour days and in Virginia for a month. That's true. You had another cast member who just didn't show up. Yeah, and yeah. we know who that is. We know. You mean the who's, one that, who's not here today? The one because he didn't show up. Yeah, <laughs> it was pretty good. We we coordinated a time. We're like, hey, we're going. He responded, cool, I'm just laying around. Yeah, I texted him. I was like, hey, I'm off at 4 o'clock. He was like, cool, cool. I texted him at 3.40-ish. I was like, hey, just waiting for work to wind down. Pretty much like ready to roll, though. Um, we still on for like 4.30? And he texted, just laying around. Just laying around. I was like, okay. He's like, is that, what, what does that mean? I said, sounds good. He said, living that life. Living, I didn't even get that living that life yeah, part. He said, living I that life. folding laundry at that point. Was not um, living that life. No. Yep. Live that life. There it is. And I said, I'm home. Tom said, sweet. I'm in en route. Yep. I said, what's the plan, Stros? Nothing. Nothing. Called him. Voicemail. And here we are. <laughs> yeah. I got to get a Christmas tree tonight, so we got extra. It waits for no man. We actually have to record on time. Yeah. No wait until 8 o'clock at night bullshit. <clears throat> and being like, oh, hey, yo, what's up? I fell asleep in those 20 minutes. I brought lotion for your tits. It's a good movie. It is a great movie. I haven't seen that movie in a while. Yeah. Trish was saying she wanted to watch that, too. Yeah? Yeah. Like, we dropped, like, a quote the other day, and she was like... Oh, Oh, happy birthday, Trish. Yeah, it's Trish's birthday. Fucking old now. A.K.A. Trist. 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 Or Tish. Or Tish. Oh, God. (laughs) I put on her Facebook today. I said, happy birthday, Tish. Oh, shit, you did? I did. That's savage. (laughs) She hasn't, like... Like yet? No, she probably didn't. She probably read it. As probably read Trish. it as Trish. Yeah, but I showed Matt, and he was laughing. Yeah, fuck that, dude. It's so bad. It's pretty good. <laughs> um, speaking of birthdays, so I want to share this story. So recently, I went to a one-year-old's birthday party. Yeah, and uh, you know, it was pretty low-key. Um, parents are vegan, which nothing against, you know. So, and like they had like chips and snacks and like other stuff. So like they had stuff for us mm-hmm. non-veganites, um, but. I thought they were vegan. Yeah, I think they just, I mean, a couple months, maybe three or four months. Nice, good for them. Yeah. Um, I thought it started off as just like, I don't know, it's kind of like they're vegan, but like there's like a couple of things. They're vegan, but they're not really because they haven't told everyone about it. Yeah. So they're not real vegan. They're not superpowers yet. They're just. Um, (laughs) Like, I mean, we went to Chili's after the party and like uh, the husband got like a buffalo chicken salad, but like the buffalo to the side. But then, like, his salad showed up and had bacon on it. And he's like, oh, I didn't know there was bacon on this. Fuck it. And, like, he just, you know, yeah. ate it. And he's like, yeah. Like, you know, so they're, they're like that. Where, like, they're, like, trying their best to, like, every meal. Yeah. But, you know, every now and then. Um, they're not going to send something back. Yeah. That's what it they're seems like. like. Well, um, all right. But the cool thing that happened after the party, <laughs> like, because I was like, oh, man, I'm going to go scope out some moms. There wasn't any really hot moms there. But uh, we're, the party's winding down. People were cleaning up. And all of a sudden, you just hear this blood curling scream. And you look up, and there was, like, this 7-year-old girl that was part of the party. And she had, like, fallen and, like, hit her face on the bridge of the playground. And her face was covered in blood. Like, it was, like, out of a fucking movie. Like, you know, when something, like, a bomb goes off and someone's yeah. just, like, oh. And she was just screaming, I'm scared. I'm so scared. And, like, kudos to the mom. Like, the mom, like. I saw the moment where the mom's running up because her kid's screaming. And then, like, as she's running up, like, she sees, like, she kind of takes in, oh, fuck, like, my kid's covered in blood. Yeah. Like, there's, like, a split second of, oh, fuck, to, and then straight to, you're okay, honey. Like, we're take care of this. Like, it was pretty good mom mode. Yeah, didn't didn't go into the panic. Yeah. But uh, I got to use my bug out bag, which I, I was why I wanted to bring that story up. Because I was like, I have a first aid kit. And then they didn't want to use the first aid kit. I felt really sad. Why do they not want to use the first aid kit? I don't know, man. Like I, so I grabbed a handful of uh, napkins. So when they went to the restroom, I handed them the napkins. But then, 
one of the grandmas was in there using the bathroom. So I felt weird, like, being in the bathroom. Yeah. So I stepped out, and I was like, oh, I have a first aid kit. Went to my car, got it, came back. And I was like, it took me a minute to find out where I put everything because, like, it was one of those pre-bought first aid kits. Yeah. And then I took everything out, and I bought more stuff. And now, like, instead of, like, a first aid kit for, like, a family of four, it's, like, a first aid kit for, like, a small village. Like, Yeah, yeah. Like, I can take care of shit if I need to. Um, so I was like, oh, shit, where'd I put everything? And so I found it. I was like, I have alcoholic swabs. I have, like, butterfly band-aids. I have gauze. I have medical tape. And then, like, if they wanted me to, like, I have fucking sutures. Like, I was like, yeah. like I've never sutured anyone before, but, like. Like, it's going to look sloppy, but. You might have a scar, but I could fucking do it. Like, I could do this. Let's do it. Um, but yeah, they didn't want, and they didn't want anything. Like, they're like, no, we're good. And I was like, okay. And then the grandma was like, here, give me a regular band aid. And I was like, okay. And then she went and like pulled scissors out of her ass and like cut, cut it into a butterfly band aid. And then ran down there or more like scooter down there with like her little walker and gave it to her and like closed the wound that way. And I was like, okay, like I literally had this. I, I literally have band aid, but okay. It's cool. It was weird. So I went from feeling really cool to like just feeling like it's kind of like kind of a letdown. Yeah, I was like, yes, this is what I prepared for. And then they're like, we don't want your shit. Yeah, I was like, fucking put it on my medical gloves. I don't want your herpes yeah. butterfly band aids. I'll make my own. I was ready for it, dude. But nah, whatever. But how you been? It's been a while. Has been a while. Uh, I've been good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Matt and I are are feeling existentially like threatened right now like so we start a new job yeah and like we're just so uncomfortable like like you spend two months training for it yeah. and then you go out in the field and like the whole way they're like you're not gonna be ready for it like we can we give you like a bunch of knowledge and prep you for like the basics but like it's a you have to learn on the job like yeah. there's you can't like prepare for it until you're out there like living it and you're gonna fuck up all the time and like that's okay and so, like, we they said they uh, like the average starting adjuster loses a uh, company like one million dollars in their first year. Damn! Like just from overpayments and yeah. stuff, you know, like not knowing any better. So they're just like, you're gonna fuck up. Like, go do it. So we had our first appointments today. We like we started like handling like claims versus like yeah. we've just been shadowing the last like couple of days. Um, so I shadowed yesterday, and then Matt shadowed yesterday and Wednesday, but I was traveling to Texas. Um, so we're just like. All right, and we went pretty well. Um, it's, we have like a good support system there. Like they don't just like completely throw you to the wolves. Like yeah, and like we're in a Geico like not a Geico shop, but we have a partnership with the shop. So that, like we work together with the shop like estimator for damage and stuff, and like we bring them a lot of business. So like we're on good terms with them, and we have like our technician and like the estimator there as well. So like we'll watch like the car and be like, okay, so like he needs to do this and this. And like we had to like do this like after the fact, so we'll add that to the estimate like before we like lock it up and be like, here's what it is, you know. So it saves us some time because we have like everyone like on site yeah, that's right going to be doing the work, so it's pretty convenient. But it's just crazy. Like I'm just like, uh, all right, here we go. And we have two appointments tomorrow, so like we did, we did one total loss today. Mm-hmm. Like him and I together, like tag team, like a total loss. And then we did, we each did like one repair. So I was like. And then that was like he felt bad because like I was like I'll do like the first one whatever like sweet, and like mine was like a pretty serious hit, mm-hmm. like not like crazy. It was like two thousand dollars, but his was like four hundred dollars. Like yeah. it was like a like he like repaired the bumper for an hour. I was like, cool. Nice. And like he had to like replace a tab, like a clip or something. Yeah, and he was like, yeah, all right, cool. So <laughs> he was like, well, there you go. I mean. It all it all bounces out. Yeah, it all bounces out. But he's like, he's like, man, yours was way harder than mine. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was all good. Yeah, I'm gonna have that moment. So I also just got a new job, and uh, I actually got the phone call. So I start on the fourth. Nice. Which okay. Is good. Because I thought it was gonna be like two weeks. So it's only gonna be this one week. Yeah. That cool. I'm out of business. But yeah, so training starts, and she said it's like a week of like filling out paperwork and like orientation. I'm like, fuck. And then I don't know what my schedule is yet. Like, it, she, like everyone, like, for being, like, a really cool company, like, I feel like the organization of everything, like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. Like, literally, I just know I'm supposed to show up on the 4th. I don't know what time in business casual and start filling out paperwork. Yeah. 
and I'm like, cool. And immediately I was like, yeah, because she was like, you can start the 4th or the 18th. You're like, I'll take the 4th. Yeah, because I was like, I don't want to be out of work for three weeks. But now I kind of wish I did because we're going to that 29 rooms thing on the 15th on a Friday. And I'm like, I still don't know what my schedule is. Like, I don't know if I'm – I'm probably going to be like a 7 to 4, 8 to 5, I'm assuming. Like, you know, like – Yeah. Like when they're there, I'll be there. And so – I got off the phone with her and I immediately called her back like two minutes later. And I was like, Hey, like, so I was going to wait until the fourth, but I figured it'd probably be better to let you know now. Like, cause I was going to tell him, like, I haven't officially got offered the job when I was first in the building. So I was like, I yeah. don't want to like be like, Oh, I have a scheduling conflict. And then like when I got like a hard start date now, I'm like, cool. And then I was like, well, I can wait until the fourth, but then that only gives them like a week and a half notice that I have like the scheduling conflict. Yeah. So I was like, I'm just going to call back. And, I was like, and she didn't answer. I was like, it's been two minutes. And she's like, I'm out of the office. I'm like, cool. <laughs> well, you're out of the office for the rest of the week. but uh, For the rest of the week? Yeah. She's like, I'm going to send you an email. Like her email. She's like, I'm out until like the 20 blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay. Hi, this is Thomas Conyers. You just called me. Um, I'm still okay for the start date of the 4th. I just wanted to like call and let you know I do have a scheduling conflict on December 15th, which is a Friday. Um I've had these like an engagement for like almost eight months now that I'm going to this thing. Uh, so like, um, please call me back so we can figure out what to do. Cause I'm not sure what my schedule is. Like, yeah. So I was like, okay. Yeah. You're like, hopefully this is okay. Yeah. yeah. Cause I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what it entails. Like, I don't know what's going on. And I'm like, literally like, this is my only, like, this is my only day. Like, I'm just like, yeah. Yeah. It's just one fi- – like, fucking schedule me on Christmas. I don't fucking care. But, like, this is, like, the one uh... – Yeah. I just need to be, like, the whole day off. You're just, like, I just would need to leave, like – I need to get out of there by, like, like one. one. Yeah. Like, so, is that cool? <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, it's – That's fun. Yeah, it's fucking stressful as shit. I'm just like <laughs> – Like, I'm sure they're not going to rescind the job offer for one day. Probably not. They might ask that you just do on the 18th, though. Like, hmm? they might just ask that you start on the 18th, though. Yeah, like, like if they're like, hey, if you can't do it, like, start on the 18th, we have this yeah. other day. I don't know. Yeah, because it literally is that Monday after that weekend. Yeah. So who knows? But it just made me laugh. But I was just like, like, fuck. I was like, I shit. think like that's worse than calling out sick when you're not really sick. You know, just like, uh, or like even when you are sick, calling out sick at work, like it's still stressful. Right. <clears throat> Especially now, like. With my new job, mm-hmm. I'm just like, because uh, like before, I mean, like I've had like workloads and stuff, but like for the most part, like you just, like my first like four ish years at Geico, mm-hmm. like I was in a position where like I was either answering the phones, so it just kind of was what it was, or like I was there to like give coaching and stuff, but if I wasn't there, like. They had a lot of mentors, like somebody else would rotate in, or yeah. like another supervisor would just cover my team and like answer questions, and I did the same thing for them. You know, so it's not like a, it wasn't like a big deal so much, but now it's like these are your assignments for the day, and like if you're not there, like somebody has to cover them because that customer is like still showing up, and like like either like a field adjuster is like coming in from like out of like balancing their time between like my appointments and theirs. Or, like, Matt has, like, double appointments, you know, like, yeah. if he was the other shop, like, I'm just like, fuck. Like, I'm like, I just have anxiety about, like, the next time I get sick. I'm just like, it's going to happen eventually. I'm just yeah. like. Yeah, I mean, it's inevitable. I'm just like, no. I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah, I fucking hate it. I fucking hate it. This is a little crazy. Mm. Um. Oh, we, oh, well, I guess I probably can't get you to look it up. I think we should try the Chubby Cap one. So my my older brother has for those of you who are listening he has a uh, a winery in Texas and we went out to Texas for Thanksgiving and we got to go like to his winery and hang out and he has a wine blending class that they offer um, and so I got to make like a, a blend of like four different wines yeah um, and I was gonna have Thomas try some wine I mean, yeah. you still have like, a good I mean it definitely have like a, a little bit yeah. I just can't like I can't get ribs busted out and be like yeah yeah we'll take a picture and post it on Instagram yeah but it's cool. That they is really cool. Got to like make your own label in like a bottle. That's cool. Do they have like a print machine there that you made it, or do you have to like hand no, it? No, I just hand drew it. Nice. They just brought out like some sticky, like label paper, and gave some like sharpies and stuff. I'm like, you can do whatever you want. And so I drew Chubs. 
and put the chubby cat blend and then travis was out there and he uh he made one with a uh double bladed like battle axe on it and he uh-huh. called it the berserker blend <laughs> and i was like fuck yeah like he was like it's like he was calling it he wanted to call it the like the rage blend or something what about the berserker blend he's like i like it <laughs> i like it <laughs> then, like in his helicopter voice he's like yeah I like this. Like, <laughs> that was awesome. So, it was a good good time. Um, so yeah, I'd love to get you uh, get you a glass of that. Before yeah, you I'm go. excited. I, I I need some wine. Yeah, I I'm not normally like a a red wine guy, but the blends it was fun. Also, they they taught us um, like different ways to. I guess like get like the full flavor out, mm-hmm. like the kind of like chewing. As you no, like a different way to like you kind of like breathe in like over like almost like sucking air like over the wine, mm-hmm. um, and it like air rapes it like in your mouth. Uh, it was cool. Like so, like I'll show you. Like it was. I was like, wait. So you like inhale as you're drinking? Kind of like not. You're not just you like put it in your mouth like and hold it there, and then mm-hmm. like like almost like you're just sucking on a straw. Yeah. They kind of like purse your lips and like suck in some air, and like a ton of it. Yeah. But like it changes the flavor. I was like, oh shit. Like, all right. Interesting. Um. I don't know if it tastes the same though, because we don't have like crystal. I don't think we do, anyways. And like, I don't know, like, if our wine glasses are like shaped the right way to like get like the swirl right and stuff. Yeah. But it was cool. Like, I was like, I learned a lot about wine. There you go. Wait, they had you drinking out of crystal? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. They only serve at a crystal. Oh, of course. They're the only like wine, like winery on like that street in Grapevine, Texas, that mm-hmm. serves at a crystal. Riddell. The what? best. The company that makes glasses is oh, Riddell. Riddell. And you so can buy their glasses, too, if you like them. From? From Wine Fusion Winery. Yeah. Nice. It has, like, their logo on it. And he, he was like, I'm pretty much of the opinion that everything's for sale. So if you want to bring your glass with you because you like the way it tasted. And what if I just walked in and was like, how much for your wine? He probably would not sell it. No. But all the art on the walls is, like, for sale. The, so the only thing that's not for sale right now is, like, their cider glasses because – they don't make them anymore. Oh, so he's like, like rare. He, he's like, well, he's just like, I don't have, like, he's like, I really like the way that, like, it pours and, like, holds and, like, he's like, it's, like, it's perfect for, like, our ciders and we don't have enough to, like, sell these. Like, mm-hmm. they don't make these anymore. If they made more, I would sell them to you and then just restock, but, like, I can't restock them. So, he's like, pretty much everything else, though, it's, like, for sale if you're interested. Nice. So, that's pretty cool. Nice one way to run a business. Yeah. He's like, and be like, yeah. fucking, just like, it's all all for sale like give it to me give it to it's me like now. it's like i don't get asked all the time but if someone's interested like sure gonna turn down money more money like yeah. for the right price everything everything's good <laughs> everything's good what are you buying <laughs> yeah so oh, it was cool selling? it was really fun but yeah we had a good good thanksgiving out there and uh between that and virginia that's basically been it's my been life recently life. yeah i just been retail got to work my last black friday fucking how's so, that feel it was so good <laughs> It was like the last four days was just like I don't give a fuck, and like I think they knew I didn't give a fuck. Yeah, because I was just like, I mean, I was still showed up to work and I still worked, but like they're like, go fold that table. I'm like, all right, <laughs> and I would fold that table. Fine. Like I mean, the table would be wrecked, and like <laughs> there's like different levels of folding, right? Like we have detailed folding where it's like, okay, we have the time, and we need some, you know, you just need time to kill. We have like recover this fucking table because the whole store's on fire, you know, just so just make sure it's a stack and just fucking get out of there. Yeah. That's fair. So I was definitely doing like the latter of the two. Like always. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> go fold that table. And I'm like, all right. And I'd be fucking on that one table for like an hour. And I'd be helping customers too, but it's just fucking. It's like, man. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. Have you dug into uh, Breath of the Wild at all yet? No, I haven't. We've, uh, we, we have, dived deep into the nintendo switch life i think i've dropped like 300 dollars this weekend on switch stuff you went ham i did oscar see i doing like at least i traded in my ps4 and like all my stuff for it and i only got breath of the wild so far i've tried to like i was like i'm i'm digging into a pretty deep game right now so i'm just gonna devote some time there okay and then work on life technically i only spent $200 $200 on my Switch. So, like, I got a $1,000 check. And I was like, all right. And then I had, somehow I had an extra, like, 200 I had $200 cash. So, like, 
I just have it in my room. And I was like, oh, that's fucking sick. So I only technically charged $200 to the Switch. <laughs> Finding money doesn't mean that you didn't spend it. <laughs> I mean, I just spent it. But I mean, it was like money I, di- I forgot about. Like, yeah, money just, you didn't you yeah. didn't factor into exactly. your, your bills. And I bought stuff. that in Fire Emblem. And I've been fucking playing. Like, Fire Emblem's like, I've been playing hard. Yeah, you have been rocking the Fire Emblem. And then I got juked. I went in to the other day because I thought I had one of those buy two, get one free coupons. And I thought it was because I re-upped my membership. Yeah. And so I go and I was like, I'm going to get L.A. Noir. I want to get Breath of the Wilds and Mario Kart. Those are like the three games I've been wanting to play. And so I go and they didn't have any of them pre-owned. So I just got them all new. I was like, it's fine. And I had a $10 off coupon. And I hand him the coupon. He's like, it's only off pre-owned items. I was like, fucking <laughs> sick, bro. <laughs> so then I basically was like, okay, well, I'm not going to buy I did, like I hate going up to the register and being like, "Well, I'm not going to buy anything." So I was like, "I guess I'll get Breath of the Wilds." So I bought Breath of the Wilds for like sixty bucks. I was like, "Great." And then I was in there, uh, my last day at Old Navy, and because um, it was our boy Matt's birthday, so I was yeah. like, "I'm going to get Mario Kart." And I was like, "Actually, I'm going to buy two copies of Mario Kart because I want to play too." So then I got so that's one hundred twenty dollars right there. Yeah. And then I bought a new screen protector because I keep fucking up putting my screen protector on my Switch. Did Matt do that for you, by the way? No, no. no. So, I, so, it's... so I still need to do that. And then I also <laughs> bought this, like, Zelda, um, like, case because, like, me and Matt's, like, look very similar. We bought the same Switch and the same case. And I'm like, we're going to fucking get this mixed up. So it was, like, really cool. Like, it just covers the screen part. Yeah. You know? And I was like, oh, it's kind of cool. And... I put it on and uh, I realized in order to dock it, like I have to take it off all the time. I was like, that, that's not, that's going to get fucking annoying. So I returned it. But when I returned it, I also bought LA Noir. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're so deep. I am so deep in that. I'm like, I'm thoroughly enjoying the Switch. Like, it's been a really, like, now that there's actually stuff coming out for it. Yeah. I knew I was going to love the Switch. I just, first of all, they were impossible to come by when they launched. And second of all, like, there was Breath of the Wild. Yeah. And, like, great game wasn't enough for me to initially drop, like, $360. Yeah, it's going to be on a system. Where I was like, but eventually there's going to be a strong lineup of games. And, like, this is going to be a dope system. Yeah. Like, and I love it. I brought it on the airplane with me. I was like, yeah, like, that, like, how was that? Like, that was, that was great. Yeah. It was perfect. And then we bought that cable thing, so now you probably can charge it, so you don't have to worry yeah. about dying. Yeah, just plug it in wherever. I even have my like portable battery pack I can plug it into. Oh, nice. And uh, yeah, like I was saying, that. so like I've only played it really handheld. Like the first time I docked it was at Matt's when we all were just kind of hanging out and we were playing uh, Mario Kart. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is my actually my first time I'm docking it, and it didn't look bad. Like not at all. No, I thought like for some because I knew it drops in resolution and stuff, so I was like, "Oh, it's kind of sucks," but yeah, it still looked pretty. Even yeah, good. even playing, um, like I was playing Breath of the Wild on my like sixty-five inch TV mm-hmm. with it docked, and like it looked good. Yeah, like I I imagine if it was something like you were trying to play, I don't know, maybe like something really graphically intensive. Yeah, like you might see like a difference, but I mean, by the same token, looking at it in like ten eighty p on a handheld like you're not gonna get you're not gonna be able to notice the same yeah, level of crispness and details that like you would on a big screen yeah where like the resolution is like blown up you know like so it's not nearly like you don't really see a noticeable difference between docking it and not yeah uh, maybe doing some like skyrim with like the remastered like filtering master that's coming out for it like it's already out or it is out now yeah but you might you might see it there but i yeah. I think there's a lot of games you're not going to notice an appreciable difference. Yeah, the whole the whole thing about Bethesda and Rockstar Games being on Nintendo is like mind blowing to me right now. Like, yeah, do you think um, Red Dead Two is going to come out for the Switch? Maybe. I mean, it'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I still think I'd buy an Xbox. It's like Monster Hunter. Like, I know I'm going to buy that on the Xbox. Yeah, just because I didn't like it on the XL so much. Like, but I feel like if I had like my mini Elite controller in my hand, like fucking, I'd probably play the shit out of Monster Hunter. Yeah, it's yeah. like the Switch. It just feels like such a more substantial thing to play than like the 3DS. Yeah, like the I like, don't know. It's weird. Like going from like I'm literally making hand signals for you are 
But like we're going from like here to like here, it is the difference. Like it is. Well, not only that, but like, I mean, just the quality of of game. You're playing a console game on the go. Yeah. Like, so being able to play like Breath of the Wild versus playing like Pokemon, you know, like not that there's anything wrong with Pokemon. I've had a lot of fun playing Pokemon games. Like, I, I my I think my enjoyment's kind of tapered off recently. I didn't even finish Sun. Yeah, I didn't. Even, I whatever. literally, I literally got my starter. And I was like, I I got like three gems in, and I was like, kind of kind of lost me here. It just wasn't like sucking me in, you know. Yeah. But like the the gameplay difference, I'm like, fuck, dude, I'd take a switch any day right now. Like, it's awesome. Yeah. And it has a three hour battery life, but I mean, I've never, I've never like while going handheld, I've never been in a situation where I'd need. Yeah, I've never played it long enough where I wasn't next to like an outlet where I yeah. could charge it, like. Or, I mean, just in general, even, I've never played in handheld mode more than three hours. Yeah. Like, just, like, at that point, if I'm going to do, like, a marathon gaming session, I'd probably have it docked anyway. It's going to be at home, mm-hmm. hanging out, you know? Like, unless the TV wasn't available or something, I would just have it plugged in. So, yeah. I I can't foresee that being a big issue. Yeah. So. Yeah. Had a fun time just playing Mario Kart. Like, I was like, oh, my gosh. It was like. It just like was nostalgia for sure. I was like, this is like N sixty four, like plugging in four controllers and like, yeah, I don't know. We talked about it like Mario Party. As soon as like a Mario Party comes Dude, out, Mario Party is gonna be ridiculous. Like, I'm all about it. Have they even announced like they're working on one yet? I don't, I don't know. No, that'd be so good though. Still no word from Stern. Oh but fuck. Anyways, my nubbit is like popping off. Oh no. One of my tabs broke on it, mm-hmm. and so now like, if I put like any pressure on it, like the and other ones pops. are popping out because like. One whole side. I just need like super glue it or something yeah. so that it doesn't come apart. Not the nub, it. Not the nub. Uh, Anyways, it's made me a Nintendo fanboy for sure. Yeah, dude. I feel bad because my mom's like, you know, Christmas is coming around. I'm like, yeah, but I don't really need anything. <laughs> and I'm like, fucking dropping bank. I don't need anything. I just drop like two hundred forty dollars on Switch accessories and games. Yeah, and then uh, I have a bunch of my dad's old games that I'm gonna trade in for something. I don't know what yet. But he has a bunch of PS4 games and things that I already own on Xbox. Okay, I still don't I still don't see anything. Oh, 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 hold on. Mario Party Switch. Mm. Is it's all to be announced, but it is an upcoming title and the twelfth installment, or maybe thirteenth, it says, in the Mario Party series. Nice. Yeah, my cousin Cedric even posted. He uh, travels a lot for his job. He uh, like installs POS systems for like different companies and like sets yeah. up their servers. And so he loves the Switch because he's on the plane all the time. And yeah. he's like, the other day he posted on Facebook. He's like, I literally had a commercial like Switch moment yesterday. I showed up in the airport, took out my Switch, and noticed the guy across from me was also playing a Switch. So then we jumped in and started playing Mario Kart with each other. And then I was like, oh, we should play Pokin. And he's like, oh, I don't have that. And I was like, oh, no worries. Literally <laughs> set up my, up set, the, set up my the, screen, and we both played with, like, I the, threw him a Joy-Con, Joy-Con. And, and we played. I was like, I like that's so cool. That's, that's pretty dope. Like, what a glory. Yeah. He was like, this, it was, like, the coolest, like, like console moment of my life where it was just like, oh, no worries. Here. Let's fucking play. Door, man. Let's go. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. I was like, that. Okay. But I thought it was fucking ridiculous when – you know, like in the commercial, the girl like shows up to like the rooftop party and like they set up and they're like playing Mario Kart and everyone's like, "Oh, I'm like, no one's gonna do that." And then there it is. <laughs> You're like, it literally happened. It to me literally in the fucking happened. That was glorious. Oh man, it's so weird having someone to talk to, right? But just... I, I, at this point right now, I'd like I've already talked through all my things that happened to me over the weekend, <laughs> and I was like, "All right, guys, and that's it." Like hand them out, hand them out, talk- or you. Or you just uh, rick roll them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bounce. So I, I told you I feel very vindicated that we got a, uh, we got content ID'd for that. <laughs> like like immediately. Like I got yeah, an email. YouTube was not having your shit. Uh-uh. They're like, hey, you don't own the rights to this. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, if they want us to take it down, I'll take it down. You're like, won't be the that's true. Board. I do not. I do not. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So. Um, we had a bit of a house sitting snafu. Yeah. Um, for those of you who are listening, so I, I'm sure you guys know we have we have many dogs. They have all the dogs. And 
it's always an adventure whenever we leave somewhere to like as a whole family to like have someone like watch the dogs and like know the routines and stuff and i think selena had been like oh like i think i don't know if, if she like made the suggestion or if my parents like reached out and were like hey do you think like her little sister would like want to do the house sitting and we were like yeah sure so we like left her all these instructions and she came over and like watched us do like our like nighttime rituals for like how to, how to feed them and um like just kind of like what to do with everything set the alarm like all this stuff and then she just like trashed the place like didn't clean anything up like obviously had like friends over to like mess with shit yeah like i was just like ah she basically had a roman orgy that was yeah and then we got home my mom was all fucking warpath oh fuck dude your mom's scary when she's mad too she was pissed it's like she was more like stressed out yeah you know but like she's like just got home from a trip like a week-long trip like a business trip like spent like four thousand dollars on like everything like gets home and immediately instead of like unpacking like starts like deep cleaning the house because it's a disaster yeah and she's just like what like what am i doing with my life like <laughs> yeah run one i'm a professional house sitter for the if you don't know that it's one of my many jobs i work it is but, yeah you basically don't want to leave any trace that you were there yeah i was like like that's why like i'm like oh when are you gonna be home and then I always try to be out of there at least two to three hours before they get home. Like, yeah. And, like, Emily done that. She left. Yeah. She just left it a fucking shit show. Yeah. And, like, Selena was texting her, like, and she just didn't get it. She's like, what do you What do you mean? And Selena's like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> this is a nightmare. This is my nightmare. Yeah. I mean, I think the worst I'll do is, like, say I wash dishes and, like, some of them might still be in the dry rack. And I'm like, okay, like. Not the best, but at least like they're clean. You just gotta clean. Yeah, like and like something, and it'll literally be like a plate, a fork, and a bowl. Because I use the same like three things. Because I'm like I don't have to do a lot of dishes. So. Yeah, so you just kind of wash them as you go. Yeah, as you, yeah, yeah. It's pretty crazy. So <laughs> a little off topic, but I I was looking at some of my notes and. I just forgot about some of these. It's been so long. Uh-huh. These are like before I left. And oh, okay. there are some talking points from like way back that I was actually like really excited about. So <laughs> there were these two headlines that I read two days apart. Okay. About like crazy deaths. And I, I think one must have been satire. Mm-hmm. I cannot imagine it being true. But let me read these to you. All right. One was um, kid dies from hickey, which I know like can happen. Yeah, so I've read you, that one as well. If you get a hickey, like it can create like an embolism, like a blood clot, you know, and then it can like yeah kill you. You know, it's obviously super uncommon, but like it could happen theoretically. So I was like, ah, that's a cool way to die. Yeah, like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> second one was kid dies from Xbox One shooting disc out, which slices throat. <laughs> I was like, what the actual. <laughs> I can all want to look like, it up. I forgot about it, but yeah. I, I saw it in there. I was like, what like, is it a shit? modified disc tray? I have like, no idea. Cause like, okay, that's like some final, that's like a final destination. Death. It is 100%. 100%. It like, dies from Xbox ejecting disc. Okay. Let's see what happened here. Like, is it on the onion or is this like CNN? I don't know. Okay, it was false. Snow says oh, it was false. Damn. I'm like, this has to have been satire or something. Yeah. But I just I remember running across it and just like immediately writing it down. Like, what the hell? That's fucking hilarious. That that has to be in a movie. If that's not in a movie in like the next like ten years, I'm gonna be really sad. Right? Like, fuck. So what that what that brought me to was like, I think we talked before about like how would you like to die, but like, what would like if you had to die in like an insane, like a batshit crazy way, like what would you want like your headline? to be okay like something like like a conversation starter death like kid like that like like oh sliced. man like if you had to leave like a legacy behind just leave people like questioning their lives do you have one i don't i oh, know i because i just forgot yeah, i forgot, forgot about, about the one. i think i did it at the time um, but i'll think about one right now i think i want to do something with like i think i want to be a body of water okay um i'll i'll explain why afterwards um, maybe like, maybe like I'm on a pier at a lake and like someone's fly fishing 
and like the hook gets in my eye and like drags me off the pier and then there happens to be just like a freshwater alligator in there or something i die or something weird or like yeah like a lure gets into my throat and i just like fall in the water and drown or something something weird like something with a fishing lure and a pier and a lake and i want that to happen because then like if a summer camp ever gets built there or if like it's a like vacation destination like i'll be an urban legend like for kids for eons like oh that's right. fucking like do you ever hear the story about tom Kanye died on the pier you know like some say he still haunts the waters some say on quiet nights you can still hear him playing the switch <laughs> or, fuck, or like on the lake <laughs> um or better yet like for fishing like oh be careful when you go fishing like if you feel like two tug on a line it's tom Kanye trying to drag you underneath you know instead of like the actual fish or something like creepy like just shit like that that'd be pretty dope yeah i think also drowning one of the worst ways i would ever want to go but 100 percent. yeah i think for my cautionary tale i would want like like something like either like like my like maybe like a necktie or Maybe like a, like a some sort of like something around my neck. Like maybe they had like one of those like a a sweater like golf style like tied around my neck or something. Okay. And it got like caught in like the rear wheel of my motorcycle as I was riding it, and like choked me and like pulled me off the back and like drug me or something. You know, like same thing. It's like it'd be like a, a cautionary tale of like, Fuck. like besides like, your, like, like I can't I can't foresee the situation of being a cape, but like some sort of like no cape kind of thing. You know, like no. Like, you can't, you can't ride like that, or yeah. you'll end up like Jason. No capes, no capes. Okay, yeah, I sorry. <laughs> I you saying the uh, necktie thing reminded me of Law Abiding Citizen, and like remember how like yeah the ratcheting like, the ratcheting necktie necktie, and that reminded me of a fact that I learned that like blew my fucking mind. Go on. Okay, so I listened to a podcast um, called How Did This Get Made with Paul Shear. And they kind of watch movies and they just discuss like horrible, like just movies that are like, how the fuck did this get made? Right. And so they were watching, um, fuck, what was the movie? I'm uh, looking at it. I'm trying to find it right now. It was either, no, it was Ultraviolet. So the one with uh, the girl from Resident Evil and stuff. Yeah. And so they were talking about it and like, like I've seen the movie. I think I own the movie. And, like, but then talking about it, like, I was remembering it. I was like, yeah, the movie's fucking batshit crazy. And, like, just fucking weird. And, like, so this guy, Kurt um, Wilmer, is the one who wrote this movie. So I'm like, how the fuck did he write this movie? But, here, but like, this is what blew my mind. He also was the writer of Equilibrium, that movie with Christian Bale. Okay. Uh, the Recruit. I don't know if you ever saw that one. Like, the CIA. Mm-hmm. No. Uh, Street Kings. Law Abiding Citizen, Salt, which is also a word, Total Recall, the remake, uh, Point Break. Like, some Jesus. really, some movies that I've actually enjoyed. Yeah. And I was like, but what? Like, what the fuck? Like, the guy who wrote Ultraviolet, also the writer of Law Abiding Citizen, which was like a really good movie. Yeah. Like- he also claims to have created Gun Kata. Like, because he wrote Equilibrium, which yeah. has Gunkata, and then in Ultraviolet, he also had Gunkata, but like he is the creator of Gunkata. So that's like his claim to fame. Yeah. <laughs> like. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It was just a weird fact. Like, normally yeah. I don't care about like celebrity facts like that, but I was like, what the fuck? You're like, what a small world. Like, how? Who ke- Who keeps giving him money? <laughs> how is this possible? Yeah. It was also and, like, um. Today, do you know who Emma Roberts is? Do you watch American Horror Story at all? I watched like the first, se- <laughs> the first season. I don't know if she's in the first season. She normally plays like bitchy characters, okay, and stuff like that. And uh, for some reason, Emma Roberts. And I was like, oh man, I wonder if she's like related to Julia Roberts. Like, you know, one of those stupid things. Yeah, not related. She is related to Julia Roberts, but it's her aunt. Okay, Robert. Uh, no. What the fuck? That old guy that's in fucking everything. Fuck, now I got Robert. Robert De Niro? No. It's a, he's also Roberts. Edward Roberts. Who's like, he's fucking always, he's in everything. Like, if I showed you a picture of him, you'd be like, oh my god, yeah, I'm going to show you a picture of him. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's in fucking everything. Like, he was in that movie that I PA'd on, The Terror. Like, oh, okay. We had a, we had wow. Make, like, 
Like he's he'll show up for you. Pay him money, he will show up. He will arrive. But you cannot bring up anything about um his sister. <laughs> like he gets really upset. I guess. Uh, Jesus. Yeah. He doesn't show up on IMDb when I type him in. He's like too obscure. Yeah. But is he related to Julia Roberts? Or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he Jesus. is the br- older brother, I believe, or half brother. Um, I'm fucking up. His name is not Edward, but he's the father of Emma Roberts and some other Emily Cunningham, who was like in Forty Old Virgin and stuff. Okay. Um. But yeah, Eric Roberts. Eric Roberts. Eric Roberts. But he's in fucking everything, like everything, right? Like he's that guy that. He's yeah. in Batman Beyond. Uh or you know, he's just in fucking everything. And I was like, oh my god, like that just blew my mind. Stupid fact. That's awesome. <laughs> Especially that like he was like on your like your like low budget movie. That Super you low budget for. movie. And fucking just like Yeah, he's he'll fucking do anything, I guess. Um But blew my mind. I'm like, about to look up his IMDB page. Yeah. He does like he always plays mobsters or like angry old guys. He's in the Expendables. Or, yeah, he's in four hundred and eighty-one movies. He's, he shows up. He's in like, and he shows up for like a day. Doesn't even learn his lines. You make cue cards. Probably hate that I would say that, but yeah, he fucking does cue cards. Wow, this is uh, this is impressive. Also, some of these sound like porn. Like steel justice, but with S T E E L E. Like, like, that sounds like might be porn. Might be porn. Maybe yeah. just like a background character. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he's a porn star. I just think he might be like a barista or something. <laughs> like you know, like we're like, oh, all right. Like it just shows up. Ugh. He's been in. Hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 20. He's in 22 movies and or TV shows for 2018. Fuck. 22. That guy got a jump start. <laughs> yeah. Eric Roberts is hustling. Yeah. Out of those, I think there's only two TV series. So 20. No, sorry. One's a TV movie mm-hmm. and one's a TV series. Okay. So 21 movies yeah. and one TV series. Dude, that guy's hustling. Props to Eric Roberts. Man's got some work ethic. He's Dude. like, I don't have much longer to live, so yeah, gotta get him or, off the count. Or not, Eric Roberts. You're you're all right. You play the same character, but maybe he's going for quantity over quality. I since he's going up against Julia. I think that might be the case. He's like, he's like, you might be a very famous and well known actress who's celebrated and revered in some circles, but I have five hundred movies. I'll like 500 guy. plus movies. I'll be the guy on that's my IMDb like, page. <laughs> oh, it's that guy. He's he's that. Guy. He's like, oh, it's that guy. Yeah, it's that guy. It's that guy. <laughs> oh, he's playing a mobster. Oh, he's playing a bad guy. Oh, it's this guy. It's this guy again. That's awesome. Yeah. Fucking Eric Roberts. Anyways, I think we're gonna call it there because I gotta go to the Christmas tree. Sounds I'm not good. Excited. It's gonna be cold. Um. Anyways, text back your friends. Uh, yeah, it's always a good. It's just, it Good just advice. in in general, in life, um, just, you know, uh, Jason, thanks for being back. You're welcome. I felt so alone. Um, that's what I'm thankful for for Christmas and Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's not be alone anymore. It's not be alone. Not be alone. I mean, fuck yeah, man. So glad you're back. Hopefully. It's good to be back. Hopefully we can keep, keep it going. Right. And not just have another. Yeah, we got we got another podcast to release. We do. We got uh, we got to get that first episode going. We got to do. We got to get Sterling over here. That's... Yeah. What's going on this weekend? I don't think anything. Look at it real quick. I literally have nothing. Friday or Saturday, we should watch. The yeah. Show and I, I don't think recording. I have anything going on this weekend. All right. So let's do that. Cool. I, Sounds... I think that's gonna be fun. Yeah, it should be. That's gonna be a great fucking cast. It should be hilarious, dude. Especially like, maybe we should bust out the chubby cat blend when we watch that. Yeah, we'll just save it, and then we can we can just get shit faced while yeah. watching the Power Rangers <laughs> on Chubby Cat Blind. Fuck yeah! I mean, like I said, like after watching like the newest Power Rangers, Ninja Steel, 
and just being like, what the fuck is going on? But being so intrigued that I'm like, I must continue to watch. Like, I can only imagine yeah. the egg of pomegranate that is I'm so I'm excited. So yeah. But yeah. So thank you guys so much for listening. Um, Jason, like I said, welcome back. Hopefully next week we'll get Sterling here and uh everything will just be whole and right again with the world. That'd be good. Be a good uh, day. I love you. Check us out on our social media. Um and until next time you guys. Rub a dub chubs. <laughs>